guys, welcome. My name is Bailey and this is my first reading vlog. I've recorded other vlogs. They're not posted because they're, they're just not good. My life isn't very eventful. If you want to follow along with this one, uh, you'll be seeing a lot of me just reading, hence a reading vlog. So a lot of you know that I've been in quite a reading slump. Yes, it's coincided with the life slump that is you know, happening right now. And I remember when I was reading A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass that I thought this would be a really great book to read if I'm in a reading slump. But I already know what happens during that series. So I figured, why not read a different series of hers? Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass, A House of Earth and Blood. So I'm going to be reading this for this reading vlog and I'm hoping it's going to get me out of the slump and loving life, live, laugh, love, hashtag. If it doesn't, I, I have no other options besides just like not reading ever again. So I haven't seen any reviews about this book. I'm going into this blindly. I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on TikTok. I know that these books really circulate those spheres. I mainly follow people who read literature, uh, even though I don't. But here, here we go. The back says, half fae, half human, Bryce Quinlan loves her life. Every night is a party, and Bryce is going to savor all the pleasures Luna Theon, also known as Crescent City, has to offer. But then a brutal murder shakes the very foundations of the city, and Bryce's world comes crashing down. Two years later, Bryce still haunts the city's most notorious nightclubs, seeking only oblivion now, trying to put the past behind her. When the murderer attacks again and an infam infamous fallen angel, Hunt Athalar, is assigned to watch her every footstep, every step, I guess there might be things that are other than feet in this, so she has to specify every footstep. Bryce knows she can't forget any longer. As Bryce and Hunt fight to unravel the mystery, the threads they tug ripple through the underbelly of the city, across warring continents, and down to the deepest levels of hell, H-E-L, where things that have been sleeping for millennia are beginning to stir. So I'm hearing that this is a trilogy and the third one isn't out yet, so hopefully I don't like it all that much. <laughs> Uh, I usually don't do this. So I usually only read series if all of them are out except for the Bloodsworn Saga. This is 797 pages and in typical Sarah J Mass fashion, I've, I have heard that all of her series, the feedback mainly is that they don't need to be this large. So we'll see how I feel. I did give A Court of Thorns and Roses mini stars because I, unlike all of you pretentious assholes, I'm able to really just suspend disbelief and appreciate a piece of trash for what it is, okay? I have started this already. I'm on page eight. I already have feedback. So we're in Midgard, which is a land in Norse mythology. So that's kind of cool. Is there going to be Norse mythology in this? Up my alley. Already, the names are pissing me off. Bryce is like a normal name. I mean, I don't know many women named Bryce, but there's like Danica, Lahaba, Lahaba. There's uh, Jessaba Roga. And y'all, we're on page eight. What? Lahaba? Come on. So that's the feedback I have already. We've already been in introduced to multiple characters that haven't even been introduced into the scene. We're just talking about them. So I'm already like kind of a little confused. There is a map. We love a good map. I mean, this isn't a good map, but it's a map. We love a map. Oh yeah, we have the four houses of Midgard and they're split and there's different creatures in each house. So that's cool. I had no idea that there were going to be like a lot of creatures. 
because in the court of thorns and roses the only creatures really are like the fae and then all of the different types of fae within the forest uh yeah come along with me as we dive into crescent city so before you proceed i do feel obligated to tell you that this may be the most chaotic vlog you've ever seen as the title suggests i read after being dumped and i didn't want to be on screen crying all the time so you'll mainly see dogs walking and well dogs walking i'm a millennial and just learning youtube so you're gonna get what you came for if all that sounds good let's go three hours later comment below if you think that i should start an instagram for my dogs uh oh Or if you think I should start a video for, or an Instagram for my high fashion. This is actually what most of the walk looks like. She was faking it earlier. Two hours later. Hey y'all. Okay, so I need to read. My anxiety is so bad right now and reading is the only thing that is helping besides just watching stupid shit. How to exist in this world sometimes. And I bumped into the person who dumped me yesterday so I'm just like very nervous and overthinking and I just need to get my mind into a book. And what book is better than a Sarah J. Mass book? Let's be real. But how do I move from this spot? Okay. I'm going to go make coffee and then I'll see you in a second. Okay, I have to do some online work, so I figured I'd give you all an update on this book so far. So I'm on page 125, somewhere, but somewhere in the 12th chapter. I don't know how to do this vlog without giving spoilers, so sorry, but I'm going to give spoilers. Editing Bailey here on a very beautiful frozen frame. I don't actually give any spoilers. I give maybe one mild spoiler as to who dies in the first couple chapters, but for the most part, you're safe. Crescent City is this place that's in Midgard, which is kind of this combination of Halloween Town and Gotham. It seems really dismal. It's not very, you know, Halloween Town in Calabar's Revenge. I think it's the second where everything goes gray or the second movie. Everything goes gray. Put that with Gotham and you have Crescent City and large like murders are normal. People, all of these like weird creatures everywhere being creatures is normal. As I said earlier, this is following an ha a half fae creature named Bryce Quinlan, and she is best friends and roommates with a girl named Danica. And Danica is in this wolf pack. She's also a wolf. And she can kind of like, the sh shapeshifters can change into humans and then back into their creature shapes. Danica is like 
super powerful someday if her you know like when her mom dies or something she's gonna become the most like powerful pack leader there ever was and her and Bryce are like party girls they say stuff like light it up to each other and they go out to the bars a lot and they do a lot of drugs honestly they're not very likable characters to me at least one of the things that sarah j mass does is she writes the type of girl that's not like other girls she writes those girls really well and bryce is this super sassy full figure you hear about bryce's ass literally so many times and i'm only on page what one did i say 127 or something she's got bright red hair and she's supposedly like super beautiful right and there's a wolf in the pack that really likes her his name's connor and he asks her out and she's like playing this hard to get game let's go back to the plot so bryce goes out one night and she, she's partying with two other girls two other friends who are also creatures and they're doing like tons of drugs and just lines of what what is like a magical substance that's equated to cocaine and bryce hooks up with someone in the bathroom and danica keeps trying to reach her but bryce is like just too drunk so bryce goes home to her apartment where she lives in with danica the drugs are just going crazy and she's like falling down the stairs and stuff and then she drops her keys in this like wet substance and she's like no the flippin landlords don't do anything around this place and then she realizes that like the stench and the wet substance is blood and she walks into her apartment and the wolf pack that is danica's wolf pack is all they're all in like pieces they've been brutally murdered including danica so bryce goes into complete shock and the next scene is her in this interrogation room and all of these angels are in like the 33rd legion or whatever they are talking about her and trying to figure out who would have done this and you're getting kind of more of a backstory about angels as well so there's an angel called hunt alathar which you know is on the back and he is like the the shadow of death he's like well known for being scary and murderous <laughs> this premise is so wild and he just cannot figure bryce out and he also is like sympathizing with her while people are like questioning not people while angels are questioning bryce and she's in shock first of all we have so many characters like legit so many characters and so that's why describing this is making it kind of difficult and i was also really really nervous at the beginning because I was having to reread pages to figure out who these characters were but now it's fine I will also say like Sarah J Mass knows her audience she's not dumb right it's just the same thing with Sarah J Mass is urban outfitters to me like we can make fun of them but they're not dumb like they know what they're doing when they when they come out with tapes and they're charging a fortune for them they know what they're doing her writing like isn't she's not a literary hero by any means but am i hooked yes but there are there are times where i'm like okay come on bryce is so not one of those girls and that's emphasized so many times and it's like she doesn't show that she's bored and she doesn't show or she doesn't show that she's scared she shows that she's bored or uh she wears really really high stilettos and so many people comment on them and she dresses in like skin tight clothes but yet she can like outrun demons right i did save a little description about her and i'm telling you this is like she's been described this way so many times here it is hunt clenched his jaw but she strode for the front door hips swishing like she knew precisely how spectacular her ass is. We know, of course, that Hunt and Bryce are gonna have a thing. I'm excited for it, I'm here for it. I hope that it's not like a court of, a court of thorns and roses when Feyre and What's-His-Face have a thing in the first book and then in the second book you're supposed to hate his guts. 
I want to like hunt. Let me like hunt Sarah Diaz. He's cool. He loves death. Let's do this. That's how it's going so far. It's a nice getaway. I, uh... We'll definitely be reading this more today after I do some work on the computer. I will also say, so this world that Sarah J. Mass has created, the Gotham Halloween Town mixture, is kind of cool. I wouldn't want to live there, but it's nice in the way that you don't know what to expect because you don't know what these creatures are or even what they would look like. So Bryce hooks up with this like tiger shapeshifter in the bathroom. Yeah, I don't know what that would look like like what that kind of guy would look like um also there's so much murder mystery happening because of the gotham city type element where you know everyone's just killing each other um but bryce is somehow in the middle of it and either the killer is going for people that bryce knows on purpose or is trying to frame bryce like we're not we don't quite understand yet so that's neat. There's also another element that um, at a certain point when you're a citizen in this city and you have some type of, if you have like a certain level of powers, I believe, you can do the drop, which essentially is you dying for like six minutes and climbing out of it, figuratively speaking, maybe figuratively speaking, and having immortality, but not necessarily immortality in the way that you never die but like you live for more centuries than you would have prior so it ages this the or it slows the aging process another interesting element and then i'll be done is that there's so much history and world building which didn't happen in the court, court of thorns and roses so i feel like sarah g mass is refining a bit more in this series so i'm excited to keep going what a fun book so far. I definitely would not have thought I would be into a book that was like this dismal. Gotham City is not my thing. I also flip and hate Batman. If Batman is your favorite superhero, does that mean that you like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos? Literally. All right, I'll see you all soon. Three days later. Good morning. It's a new day and it's about to be a new me because what's better than doing your own haircut after being done by a fuckboy? Nothing. So I'm gonna do the DIY haircut that is called The Butterfly by Brad Mondo. I don't think that he came up with it, but he definitely gave a, a better tutorial for it. I'm making sure that all of my stragglies are out now this is the longest hair my the longest my hair has ever been uh and it's all one layer and i was purposely trying to do that because i had never had just one layer before but i really can't stand how my face is not framed so here we go Okay, we've got the unicorn and the high pony. Now we're gonna take off the same 
up here. I'd say it is pretty damn good with the wing. I do and re-wet it, style it, clean up my mess, and I'll be back. Okay y'all, what do we think? I think it looks good. I will probably have to get some thinning shears and go through these big heavy chunks like that, but overall I think I've got the 70s look going on digging it i also have like a cowlick right there as you can see so i can't do that thing that hairstylists do where they just just naturally goes that way so cool it worked three days later
several days later. I woke up this morning. Actually, I went to bed last night and I was like, tomorrow's a new day. You know, be a new person, self-concept. And then I woke up this morning super depressed at 6 a.m. replaying certain things that people have said to me recently, especially in separation. Um, so today I'm gonna try and get out in the sun, maybe go grocery shopping since I haven't eaten for a little bit. <laughs> I ate a full chocolate bar, so there's that. Um, and I'll try and record the dogs hiking because that's their favorite thing to do. <sighs> All right. I wish depression could listen to me. You know? Like, just listen to me when I tell you tomorrow's a new day. Rude. sperm trees. One eternity later. I did it. I finished this tome. I'm maybe the worst vlogger because I didn't record any of me finishing reading this book. I devoured it. So you'll see on Goodreads people will be talking about like the last 200 pages. I would argue that the last 300 pages are just, I got whiplash. It was an emotional roller coaster. And because of that, I don't want to give any spoilers. I want you all to go into this as blindly as I did. I basically told you the the gist of maybe like the first couple chapters, but that's about it. I will say that there is a mystery, many murder mysteries, but then there's also like a, a drug crime mystery that's going on. And the people that are behind these killings and these drug deals, it's like, I cried twice. Never did I ever think that I would cry from SJM. I cried twice and I couldn't just, I couldn't stop reading it. And I really didn't want to get on camera so that you could see me crying even more. I love the ending. Now, it didn't 
make me feel like I needed to run out and get the second book. It really wasn't that much of a cliffhanger. The majority of why I would want to go out and get the second book is because I actually really, really enjoy the characters and the world building. I thought that was pretty cool that it wasn't like this cliffhanger of, I don't know, if someone died and we don't know how or who or whatever. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a cliffhanger like that, right? It, it was like a little bow. It was a nice little bow. So I do get to spend some time away from this series because the second book is in hardback and I don't like hardback. So I'm going to wait for the paperback to come out and then read it. What more can I say? I give it five stars. I think that you should read it. It's at every freaking library. It's, it's around. Now you will have to devote some time to it, but it's a nice, it's a nice read. I'm sorry for not giving much more detail, but I just can't. I just can't do that to you. So maybe this is the cliffhanger. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. It was my first. It won't be my last. Bye-bye.